Um, hello, so continuing on this weekly contest 331, uh, third problem is house robber um, 2560. Um, so the problem says that you have um, consecutive houses along a street um, and each house has some money inside it. And there is also a robber who wants to steal money from these houses and he doesn't steal from adjacent houses, right? So when once he steals from a house, he skips the next one. And we have this concept of a capability of a robber, which is just the maximum amount of money he steals from one house, from from a house, right, at a time. Okay. So you can think of it as they have a backpack or whatever that can hold X amount of money. Um, and you get a list of numbers that represents the, the money in each house. So you can think of house zero has two, one has three, um, and so here we get also an integer k that represents the minimum number of houses the robber will steal from, right? So basically, we want the robber to steal at least from two houses, right? So k, k equal to two, for example, here. And the goal here is to return the minimum capability, right? Going back to this capability here, that the robber can have Okay, to be able to steal at least k houses, right? So what's the minimum um, capability for this robber to be able to steal at least two houses, right? So he can steal more, but at least two houses. So for example, here, we are looking for what's the minimum capability that this robber need to have to steal two houses, right? To steal at least two houses. So if you look at this, you can think of it as, okay, uh, if he takes two, he has to take five. Right. If he takes three, he can take nine. Right. Um, and so, if you take a look here, if he still is two and five, he has to have a capability of uh, five. Right. If he's still three and nine, he has to have capability of nine. But we want to minimize the capability, so he, um, so we can take the minimum possible one is five. Right. And so that's sort of what this has here. Right, it's, it's between five and nine because the other option also is just going stealing two and nine. They are not adjacent, so they can do that, but still nine. So the minimum of all the max of stealing two houses is five. Minimum of five nine nine, so it's five, right? So that's sort of the idea. Now, in terms of um, constraint here, we have ten to the power of five numbers, and k is also roughly up to ten, the number of. Um, the length of numbers, so it's up to 10 to the power of 5 as well. So already this here, you can see that something that is of n k won't work, right? Be because it's, go it's going to be roughly 10 to the power of 10. Um, and so we need to think about something else. Um, so let's see how we can do it. Um, okay, so how do we think about solving this? So what are we asked to do is to find the minimum capacity, right, um, out of all possible ways to steal at least k houses. I think that's too much of a mouthful. So just the minimum capacity to steal at least k houses, right? Out of all the houses, right? And so that's the question. And you can see here, this should make you think about binary search because you have some sort of space and you want to find the minimum possible way that accomplishes a condition, right? And so just build the intuition that this sort of question usually um, requires binary search. So let's see how we can solve it with, with binary search. Um, so what's the question that we'll be using binary search in? Um, so the question for binary search is basically we want each time to find out if is it possible, right? to use some capacity x, let's say, to use capacity x to steal at least k houses, right? And the pattern and the pattern that we are looking for with binary search is usually some, for this to be a monotonic function, so this would be the function. And so what, what, what we mean by that is that for some set of values, right, as the values increase, First, it's either this pattern false, and then once it becomes true, it stays true, 
right? Um, so we are either looking for the first last false value in the first true value, or if we are using this pattern, we are looking for the last true or the first false, right? So one of these two patterns. Uh, for this problem, let's it's actually the, this pattern, but let's, let me show you why. Um, okay, so this is increasing values of the parameter x, by the way, and this is the values of x, right? And so as x incre increases, let's say you are able to steal from k houses with a value of 5, with a capacity of 5. Would you be able to steal from, a, uh, from them with a capacity of 6? Well, yes, because 6 is bigger than 5, so if you can fit in a 5, you should be able to fit in a 6. And similarly for 7, 8, anything bigger than 5. So you can see once it becomes true, the function will stay true. So that's the first part. And s similarly for false, if you can't steal from k houses with 4, you, shouldn't, you won't be able to steal with 3 or with 2 with smaller values. So that's why we have false. When you have false, the, the other values are, s are also false. The other values smaller than it are also false. So with this, we determine that this function is monotonic, right? And so now what we need to do is, j this means that we can apply binary search to find what place do we want to find. Well, we are looking for the smallest possible capacity G to be able to steal from uh, K houses. So we are looking for the smallest possible value that is true, right? That's what we are looking for. So we are looking for the first true value because this is the smallest. So this is what we are looking for. Okay, so we know what we are looking for. Now we just need to find what is the space of search that we are going to use for our binary search. So what is the low value and what is the high value that we are going to use? Now with binary search, the, um, the um, uh, invariant we are trying to make is that low needs to always be false in this pattern so this has to be false and f of high has to be always true so these are the variants that, that we want to maintain okay okay and so and this means basically that at the last when we exit the binary search we would have high here and low here so low would be the last false high would be the first true so that means we can use a return true a return high the value the, in the value high okay so to maintain this, what do we need for low? Well, with the problem says that the houses, um, that one, the number in each house is guaranteed to be bigger or equal to one. So to not be able to steal from any house, you can just use zero, right? That's guaranteed to be false because you can't steal with a capacity of zero. You can't take anything. And we know that at least every house has at least one value has a value bigger than one okay so we can s so that guarantees uh, this constraint for uh, this variant for low now for high we need it to be true so how do we guarantee that well if we take the max the max of so we have the list of houses right which is the numbers right and we have their uh, the what the amount of money in them right if we take the max of these values then we are guaranteed that we'll be able to steal from k houses because we can take from the max one. So that means we can take from all the houses. So that means we can take from at least k houses, right? So here we can just use the max of the numbers, which is the the list of value of the amount of money in each house. Okay. Um, yeah. So with this, we should be able to set up our binary search properly. The only thing that, be, uh, that that is left is how do we check this function? How do we do this check here? How do we do this? Okay. When we have an x value, how do we check if it's possible to steal from at least k houses? Well, with that, we, we can do it in two ways, right? So for f of x, um, so two ways to, to solve it, either dp or greedy. I, I, th I think greedy is easier, so I will explain that. Um, instead, you can try to do it with the dynamic programming solution. But for greedy, the idea is that it's always better um, to choose the earliest possible one. Right? What, what do I mean by that? So let's take an example. Let's say we have one, two, five, four, um, maybe mm, six, uh, seven, three. And let's say our x, which is the capacity we are looking for, is five. And then k, let's say, is equal to two or even we can take three if you want later on so the idea is okay l if we take 
if we take one here right then we can take five right because we can take the adjacent one so the question becomes why take one and not two if you take two you can take four the thing is that the only thing we care about we don't care about maximizing the values we take we only care about taking uh, at least k houses that's what we want but here if you take one you can take this four right because the because between it and the next one is one distance then it's still va it's valid to take it because there are even two gap a gap of two houses between them right so there was no advantage of taking this too right because if you take the earliest one right you give yourself more chance of the one uh, the earliest one as well you can take right so because we want to just maximize the number of houses we take so that we can get to take at least k it's always makes sense to take the earliest one because the earliest you take because here for example if you take two you can't take five right and so it's better to take one so that you can uh, uh, on the earliest possible time take the close take the um, next one right as you can see here with the example of one, two, and this applies even uh, in other places. Let's say you are at five here after took one. Is it better to take this five or or go take this four? Skip five and take four. It's always better to take five because if you take five, then what can hap What will happen is that you can you can take six, but if you take four, you have to take seven. But with five, you can take seven if as well right so there is no advantage of take of skipping right so it's always good to choose the earliest possible one and so that's the greedy approach we'll take then for uh for our solution and what this would mean basically is that um for our can uh, the f our f of x function will just loop through the the array right and just keep track of the last taken value right okay so that we can know if there was if it's not the ad adjacent house, if it's not take, because we want to take the earliest possible. And as soon as the count of the overall ones that we took is bigger or equal to two, uh, is bigger or equal to K, that means we can return true for our f of x function, right? So that's roughly the gist of the idea. Now let's implement it and make sure it passes test cases. Um, okay, so let's implement the solution. So first we need our binary search and we can just use what we saw in the overview. Uh, feel free to go back um, if you forgot some of the explanation there. So we need low and high. And what we said is that we need low to maintain the invariant that is false. So we need we can start with zero because um, z with the value zero, you can't rob anything. And then for high, we said max of the numbers. And now we want to do while high minus low is bigger than one. So because remember, what we want is to end up with false. Uh, this is the pattern that we have. And we want to... Let me actually do it here. What we want is the end. We stop when low is here, right? Low is at this position and high is at the first true. So this would be the high value. So that's where we stop. So we need the difference between the two to be one, right? Um, and so that's what we do here. And now we need the mid, so normal binary search there. So um, we can just do it like this. Division by two, we do it in binary. Um, like this and then we want to check if f of mid right so this is our f of x if it is um, let's call it can um, like just to um, to express that we are using you can steal k houses with um, with this x capacity right so if you can then that means we are at a true value right so the classic binary search let's say maybe you are here this is the mid because it's true or maybe it was here so we don't know if it's the first true or one of the other trues right so we just want to set high to this mid right so that we place it here and we check we can verify if it's the first one which it will return it because we low will end up here right um and we also maintain the invariant that f of high or can of high will always be true right now if it's not so it's false then we want to move let's say somewhere here our mid right then we want to move our low to this position because again we don't know if it's the last false or if it's one of the other false so we just set low to mid to this mid value 
and we maintain the invariant that f of low is false, right? And then at the end, we want to return the val the first true, which is where the high would be, right? So we return high. And now we just need to call this, uh, define this function, can, and we said we are going to do it in a greedy way, which is it's always better to take the earliest possible value, right? So we need to have just a counter for the overall number of things we take. And we want to go through the numbers, so range of n. Now we want to keep track of the last taken, right? But for to be able to take as earliest as possible, which means we want to take the value zero, let's put let's take into minus two so that zero, the difference between zero and minus two is two, so it's not adjacent. If we take minus one, it's it's sort of adjacent by the calculation of the difference. And so we want to just initialize it to minus two so we can take the value at position zero. Okay? So now what we want to do is we want to check can we take this value? So if we can take it, let's take it because it's always better to take the earliest possible time. So what does it mean to be possible to take it? Well, if you have two, let's say this is last taken position, right? Uh, and then you have I, right? So these are the two positions. What we want to verify is that it's not adjacent. We want to verify that there is um, something between them. And so for that, the difference needs to be bigger or equal to two. Um, and we also need the number that we take to not exceed the capacity that we are checking. And so to do that, we'll do nums of i is smaller or equal to x. Okay? So in this case, we can take it, so let's take it. Uh, okay? So taking it means incrementing the count and changing last taken to be this value, right? Because we just took it. Now, as soon as we take at least k houses, which means the count is bigger or equal to k, we want to say this is possible, right? It's possible to take k houses, at least k houses, with this capacity. So we want to return true. But if we go and we we couldn't reach count, we want to return false here at the end because we couldn't reach ever count bigger or equal to k. Um, and so we return false in that case. And um, now let's run this. Okay, looks like there is, we are returning a value, right? Uh, sorry about that. This needs to be returned false here. And we want to return the minimum value, yeah. Okay, so that looks good, let's submit. And that passes our test cases. Um, yeah, so again, binary search and then a greedy approach for the binary search function. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.